Like, I want them to get the resources and I want Joe Biden to get the briefings. But like the uh, the whole idea of the transition is like you meet with your your cohort so you can learn right. the ropes. They yeah. never learn the ropes. Briefings? You know Trump's briefings are written in wingdings. There is no way there is anything useful on a sheet of paper in his office. She's a comedian, actor, writer, and co-host of the podcast Couples Therapy. Please welcome back returning champion. Naomi Ekparrigan, so good to Ooh, see you. Ooh, so good to see you. You're still giving me cur COVID curls with a hint of shape. You bet. And we're just doing our best. We're doing our best today. COVID is still here, even as we have had a big victory. We are confronted by the reality that our problems remain despite achieving a big goal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, And we mm -hmm. do our best. I think the children had to learn this now. You know, I think there's a whole generation of children who are learning <laughs> life's not supposed to be fun. You know, <laughs> they were going to learn it sooner rather than later. Let's get into it. What a week. On Saturday, the day our last episode was released, the AP Times and networks finally called it. And anybody who isn't afraid of Newsmax or Lou Dobbs acknowledged that Joe Biden is the president elect of the United States of America. Across the country, people took to the streets, waving American flags, chugging champagne and malort, dancing on cars and singing Sweet Caroline in front of the White House as Melania hummed along inside. <laughs> wow i forgot about her i forgot about her in the mix of all this you're right this is some free time for melania finally i just like imagining her along uh, in the white house being like uh ba, ba, ba. what was that nothing <laughs> <laughs> ba, ba, ba. what was excuse me oh, nothing i was just humming <laughs> humming what as you all know by now, Rudy Giuliani and Corey Lewandowski were planning on giving a bogus voter fraud press conference at the Four Seasons in Philadelphia, but accidentally booked the parking lot of a business called Four Seasons Total Landscaping, which is located in industrial Philadelphia between a dildo store and a crematorium. Now, Naomi, this was one of the funniest things that ever happened. Twitter has already kind of had its way with this material. Right, right. Uh, but, but I did want to say one thing, which is I'm proud of us. Because while we knew it was a parking lot next to a normal run-of-the-mill sex shop, we all ran with calling it a dildo store. <laughs> because dildo is a funny word. And when you say sex shop, it conjures many things. But when you say dildo store, it conjures fewer things. <laughs> fewer things in a livelier array. You know yeah. what I mean? To really think of it. That was literally the funniest thing to ever happen in the world. Like, it was too... It was just so perfect. It was just so perfect it's like you're such a loser on so many levels you know not just presidentially just psychically you're a loser existentially you're a loser uh look there's nothing wrong with having a press conference next to a store that sells sex toys we have to be sex positive we have to be dildo positive well i'm sex negative john lovett i don't know if you know this about me but i'm sex negative and i'm no longer afraid to say it okay i just want not it's so it's the moisture, it's the <laughs> liquid. I just like am sex negative. And so it's like, I don't have to be anything else. No, you can be sex negative. You can be sex negative. All I'm saying is we can flip it and say this. Oh, you can't believe they held a press conference next to a dildo store? I can't believe I have to buy dildos next to a place Rudy Giuliani goes to undermine democracy. <laughs> <laughs> What's this press conference doing next to my dildo store? <laughs> I'm just a good American Democratic yeah. supporter, <laughs> believer in voting and voting rights, trying to buy a sex toy. Especially, and I got I Rudy mean, Giuliani here. And especially, like, I feel like that's the weekend you needed it. That's the weekend you needed to get out some tension by yourself, you know? And you're right. Giuliani's a real buzzkill, a real sexual buzzkill. <laughs> like Rudy Giuliani being like, Okay, the press conference is over. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. You all go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 go. Go, 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 go. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't need a ride. I have a car. I have a car. No, I, I know it doesn't look like I have a car. I have a car. Just go. Just go. Just go. Just go. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm just going to I'm gonna read emails. I'm just going to. I'm fine. You guys go ahead. No, I'm not going. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, <laughs> As we all expected, Trump is refusing to concede, claiming over and over that there was massive voter fraud while the campaign begs supporters to bring them evidence of it. Claiming you made a massive discovery and then scrambling to prove it's real is what we call in politics pulling a Theranos. Oh, there Take it is. Take that. 
Take there that, it is. Elizabeth Holmes. Never forget Elizabeth Holmes. I feel like we've forgotten her, and I want to say I really appreciate you bringing her back into public consciousness. Have I ever told you that I met Elizabeth Holmes at a party, and I told Ronan um, she's super convincing, either she's being railroaded or she's a sociopath? <laughs> <laughs> but she's, I did find her persuasive. I was you like, did. God, yeah. This you Wall Street remember. Journal thing's a racket. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> I want this. I want this cool blood test. She's smart. I like her. I'll give her money. <laughs> She's smart. I want this cool blood test. So deep. Such a deep voice. The campaign was also forced to shut down their voter fraud hotline after it was inundated with prank calls from TikTok teens trying to order pizza, report Antifa, and tell long-winded stories that slowly reveal that they spotted the Hamburglar. It's ironic that prank calls are decimating the Trump campaign because it was Trump's idea to give the jerky boys the Mark Twain Award. <laughs> that one's okay. a journey. Okay, a journey. It, was a, it was a long, what I call a long muddy walk. That's a long <laughs> muddy walk. We got there, but we kicked up a lot of dirt. I just want to tell you a um, little, little BTS on that joke, a little behind the <laughs> scenes. Uh, I was like, oh, I want to say that the jerky boys are heroes. And then I was like, back of my mind... I bet they were racist. <laughs> Back of my mind, I'm like, I feel like those voices are not allowed today. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't remember, but I was in summer camp, I think. And so I was like, wait, we can have Trump give him an award, then we're safe. Because Trump that. sucks. <laughs> that was real good. Okay, now I see where you went there. I see where that's you went why, there. That's why that's mm-hmm. what happened. That's the what happened levels. in the story of that joke. Also this week, the Trump campaign has been aggressively asking for donations to fight the election results, but the fine print says only donations greater than $8,000 will go toward that. All smaller donations are funneled into a new PAC or the RNC to spend how they see fit. Trump has had a tough week, so who can blame him for cheering himself up with just some light grifting? Just some light, (laughs) just a hobby of grifting. Meanwhile, Trump has actually said to close aides he has basically no path to keeping the presidency while still publicly rejecting the legitimacy of the election. Uh, of course, privately admitting it's hopeless while publicly acting like there's a chance at success is a skill Trump learned raising Don Jr. <laughs> yeah, baby. Get him. Get that DJ. I- get that DJ. We got to get the last couple ones in because we're about to forget that they exist. You know, we're this close. With this close. Honey, I hope so. They look so much like if Jabba the Hutt lost weight. I was looking at an image of the two boys, you know, Eric and Don, and I forget which one doesn't have a chin. But I just feel it's like they were smiling. And it's, you know, it takes a very specific person to look worse when they smile, Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're two of those kind of people. It's like they were smiling and it was like, oh, too much, too much. They they smile like they deep down like they know deep down you know that they know <laughs> they just know they know what's going on they know they uh, all know first lady Melania Trump is reportedly refusing to meet with Joe Biden he will become first lady when Joe Biden takes office that is of course unless Jill can make it through her terrifying Christmas maze find the Slovenian goat ornament to buy herself an extra ten minutes before the Minotaur is released. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. Wouldn't you want to be a a fly on the wall for that? Fucking Jill and Melania. Like, what would that conversation even be? Melania wouldn't say words. She would just kind of sit there silently. And then I think Jill would just, like, take a sip of her tea. It's, like, inside of that room, all the kind of other, the, like, couturement, the, 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 the power, all of it kind of melts away and it's just two people. I think about, like, the letters that presidents write the next president and put in the desk. And, you know, the one, you know, the one from like George H.W. Bush to Bill Clinton is like, your success is now our country's success. I'll be rooting for you. Or or Reagan wrote a letter to George H.W. Bush and it was like, I'll miss our Thursday lunches. (laughs) And the letter from Barack Obama to Donald Trump was like, dear Mr. Trump, here are the reasons why democracy is important. Uh, Please, (laughs) please chill the fuck out. Hey, hey, chill the fuck out, please. (laughs) Please try, for the love of God, it's really important you not make this all about you. Please. And he didn't sign it Barack, he signs it B.O. I think there was like a real, it was a real yeah. balance, right, to try to be mm-hmm. cordial without being familiar, without treating him with the respect. All that's a way of saying it's like, when Jill Biden and Melania Trump are sitting down to have a conversation, I don't care that Melania is the first lady and Jill Biden's about to become the first lady. That's Jill Biden humoring this lady who has no <laughs> business being there. <laughs> Oh, God, that's so true. Oh, my God. We never have to talk about her again. 
Ooh, Melania, never again. That's beautiful. Cause she's gonna go into hiding. Like, like we're never gonna see her again publicly, I think. The rest we barely of saw her when she was first lady. Well, thank you. And she is not interested in this job. At all. She was livid. She was like, I don't wanna be here. How dare you? So yeah. this is this was the worst way to get a green card I could have possibly imagined. <laughs> I ought to say that. I don't even know. I'm going to get in trouble. I don't care. Uh, Trump has also told senior government officials to block cooperation with President-elect Biden's transition team, which means Joe Biden's team of seasoned professionals with decades of governing experience won't be able to get any pointers from RNC interns with donor parents who were promoted to deputy ag secretary. I am not worried. Like, I want them to get the resources and I want Joe Biden to get the briefings, but like, the, uh, the whole idea of the transition is like you meet with your, your cohort so you can learn right. the ropes. They yeah. never learn the ropes. They don't know These the These people ropes. don't have the ropes. They will literally be walking around and they'll be like, here is a bathroom. And it's like, sir, that is an office. Like they couldn't give you a tour of the building they worked in, first of all. And then second of all, briefings? You know Trump's briefings are written in wingdings. There is no way there is anything useful on a sheet of paper in his office. There was this um, there was a story about and I think it's I, I you know, jokes aside, it is worrying, right, that that Donald Trump will leave office and obviously he's going to need money. He needs a <laughs> lot of it. Uh, and he has all this classified information that uh, he does not respect uh, mm. the institutions that classified it. He may use it against him. He may be angry at the deep state, something he's invented. And then I'm like, wait a second. Donald Trump is going to reveal information he hasn't learned anything new <laughs> since like 1989. Like he hasn't retained anything that wasn't on a New York Post cover with 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 Dinkins on it. Like that's the Dinkins. last thing he retained. Oh my god. Oh, that is the one silver lining, right? Dumb as bricks. So that at least he's not going to get anything out there. He just doesn't ret- he just doesn't think he needs to learn anything. So he hasn't. Right. I mean, it's it's I said this to Alyssa last week. It's like we really now have this experiment complete. Like he got to be president of the United States. You travel the world. You mm-hmm. meet every foreign leader. You have access to the, to the deepest, darkest secrets of this country. You can call upon wisdom from anyone at any time in the world at your fingertips. You can meet people who, have, who understand every facet of life, scientists, people who have suffered, <laughs> people who are advocates. You can, you have, you as, as president, you, are, you have access to like virtually every aspect of humanity. And he learned not a thing. <laughs> he grew not at all. Nothing, nothing. Wow. Think about, think about how much you grew in your first job. Just like, oh, I learned about that. Like I learned when I was a paralegal. And I learned when I was like <laughs> doing like you get a you get you know I learned when I like was emptying boxes. Like, you know, Honey, you I learned, learned you just reading learned. Harry Potter. Okay, I grew just reading the Harry Potter. You know, I mean we don't like her anymore, but it was part of growth. <laughs> and it's like the fact it's almost like to me it feels like oh it's way more work to not grow. Like it's almost like it was active. You know what I mean? Like how did you manage that? That is really hard work. It's like harder to stay dumb when you have all that access. <laughs> like I really learned from Harry Potter that human beings come from immutable groups and those mm-hmm. groups are really, really important. And we should yeah. really divide children into groups when they're yes. small uh, yes, yes, and yes. judge them in perpetuity by those groups <laughs> uh, and not allow them to choose their groups, have the groups chosen for them by right. adults or by a system they can't understand and yeah. have that dictate yeah. the terms of their existence uh, until the day they die. <laughs> That's sort of what I took away. I can't believe, I don't know. I don't know, Naomi. I think the warning signs were there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. I don't know. This bitch said if I had a feeling, I could turn it into a horse. And yet, for some <laughs> reason, I can't change my gender expression and identity. Okay, JK. <laughs> I'm done. These aren't the issues we came to discuss. Yeah, no, and, and I just should just confess right here. I haven't read Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got it. You got it. I got the gist. I got the gist. <laughs> Three more White House staffers have tested positive for COVID, including housing secretary and blinking enthusiast Dr. Ben Carson. <laughs> All signs point to the White House election night party as a super spreader event. But Corey Lewandowski claims he got it while he was in Philadelphia, which means all those people didn't even have to go into the dildo store to get <laughs> fucked over. Back to that. Back to that. We're back. 
So Don Young, who is this prick from, from Alaska, he's their longtime Republican, their single congressman. Uh, and it came out that he is Kobe. He's actually an older person. Um, and my thought is, uh, because he's such an asshole, you could actually root for him by saying, uh, don't worry, only the good die young. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I didn't even write that one down. That one just happened. That's what that I was, call a professional. That, that was an accident. That was an accident. <laughs> Accident. And with some very promising news, Pfizer, who we all stand, announced this week <laughs> we can't we have to stand. We can't help it. It's <laughs> Pfizer. We love them. <laughs> announced this week that their COVID vaccine was 90% effective against the virus, and Dr. Anthony Fauci said it might be available to all Americans by April 1st. I want that vaccine, Naomi. And look, I know they say that it's gonna go to frontline workers yep. and maybe nursing homes first, but you know that Palantir is involved. And that probably means I've seen them talking about their supply chain. I think that means that there's going to be some of these cold trucks that get rerouted. And I want I want in on that action. <laughs> oh, my God. We could have that for you. I don't want the first round. I want to give give me like the give me 2.0. So okay. I got to say, I, I was there, too. I was there, too. And the longer this goes on, the more I'm like, just just try it on me. <laughs> Like it, honestly, like I, I was so I would have been so cautious, and now I'm like, I don't know. There's a trial. I'll do it. Put me in. Put me in. I hear you. I hear you. I really do. I really do. I don't know if I could, you know, come April first. I might be in line. You know what I mean? I, would, I really might be. But I'm always like, my God, what do we know about the cocoa? And finally. A source told Reuters that Trump is planning to run for president again in 2024. <laughs> That's the whole joke, right? There's nothing after that. As if America would ever elect Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. That's why oh, your man. name is Love It. That's why oh, your is name that why? is Love It. <laughs> is that why? <laughs> Naomi, how are you doing? Honey, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best in Quar, just feeling stir crazy, feeling very yellow wallpaper. I just, I'm just seeing things in the walls and I don't know what to do about that. But, you know, I'm doing good, still podcasting. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Look, obviously what Trump is doing to undermine the election is very scary. I understand being scared. I understand taking it seriously. We should obviously take it seriously when one of the two major parties abandons democracy, even if our laws right now are still strong enough to resist it. But a part of me does think that a lot of people are kind of vibrating with anxiety around mm -hmm. this because they don't know what to... It's a complicated moment, you know? It's, it yeah. really is. Like, we're, we're at the end of this election. It was a... You know, we, we focused on 2018, we focused on down ballot races, we focused on the Senate, but 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 removing Trump was like the great goal of tens of millions right. of people all at once, all over, all at the mm -hmm. same time. And uh, it's, you know, we're, we're on the verge of it being done. It won't feel safe until he's truly gone, yet there's not much we can really do right now on that one project of removing him. Mm -hmm. We're still in this pandemic. They're, they're attacking the democracy. They're attacking our victory, which we're so proud of. And we're stir crazy and we don't know what to do with these feelings. So I feel like a lot of people are kind of texting and, and tweeting about the, the coup attempt. We need the feelings to dictate the news, as opposed to the news dictating the feelings to some extent. You know what I mean? I do. I think it's also, you know, there is something to be said, you know, uh, a little anticlimactic, right? Like Joe won, but not in some of the places we wanted him to. And it took a week to find out. And like, you know, and I just think, you know, people were celebrating in the streets. Oh, my God. You know, in so many places. Um, but other than that, it still was that feeling of like, oh, but now what? It doesn't feel different yet. The world doesn't feel different yet. As you said, it's like we're still yeah. we're still in it. So I think there's also that, too, because you're like, OK, we did the thing, but it doesn't feel like should, what, what do we do now? Who should I be? Who should I be tweeting about? Who should I be yeah. hashtagging? <laughs> It's a little bit like, um, you know, uh, we drove to the church, we banged on the glass, we, 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 we fled the altar, we got on the bus, we can't believe we did it, and then all of a sudden we're like, oh. Uh, <laughs> what's your last name? Like, I feel like that's the energy of the graduates. We're like, I don't know your last name, do I? You know, it's real, real uncomfortable, real like, do you want to get a burger or... 
should Where's probably find out if we have anything in common. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, how have you? Because I feel like you know, obviously, the, the election was your life's work um, for the last four years. It was right. like all of it, like. What have you been doing? Have you taken naps? Are you? De- I mean, it looks like you're deep conditioning your hair. Thank, thank you for saying that. It is the lighting. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate <laughs> that. Um, look, I think we're trying to figure out how to make sure we can be helpful in Georgia and send people to votesaveamerica.com slash Georgia because that's another piece of it, which is just like the, the hope, of course, was that we would have this opportunity after this four years of misrule to demonstrate fully, right? Like, mm-hmm. here's what progressive governance can do. And instead, because the Republicans were so successful at turning out their people, it's going to be a real slog. And mm-hmm. so much of what has gotten us into this crisis is mistrust and uh, um, a lack of faith in government and government's ability to help people. And Mitch right. McConnell and Republicans understand that. And so once again, we're in a situation where we will be fighting tooth and nail to demonstrate how government can actually help people in a crisis and beyond against somebody who views it as part of his political strategy to undermine government, undermine institutions and kind of reap the whirlwind. But that's what I find so interesting, because I think on one hand, there was this sense of at times the Democrats feeling like Biden is not Trump. And that was like what they thought would be the galvanizing force. And it was sort of like, but then at the same time, on the Republican side, it seems like their big rallying cry is just like, not government. I don't get how not gov like government's bad actually compels people to go vote. Like, if you tell me the government is not paying attention to you, because you cannot tell me anybody in Kentucky feels like Mitch McConnell is taking care of them. No way. So then I don't, but I don't get what would even drive them to the polls in the first place. I think one thing we really need to do is we need to stop denying the agency of people on Facebook, people watching Fox Mm -hmm. News. We need to stop pretend like, yes, uh, Facebook radicalizes people. Yes, Fox News radicalizes people. That's absolutely true. But we need to like respect the agency that like these people are making a choice. They're Mm -hmm. switching from they're they're choosing OAN news. They're fine. Right. Right. They're they're radicalizing themselves. And we have to Mm -hmm. like we have to figure out. Off, like we have to assume that there's whole groups of people that are kind of lost to this, but we have to understand the moment, the moments that lead people down these rabbit holes into Facebook right wing stuff, Judicial Watch, Dan Bongino, Ben Shapiro. We got to find the reason people are seeking this stuff out. Right. We gotta find, and we have to figure out how to kind of um, it's, you know, it's it's religious, it's cult like and we have to figure out how to stop people from joining and we have to find ways to reach people inside and kind of help them out and show them that there's actually a better world out there. Well, that's the thing. I think you're right. I think it's the helping people out. I mean, my God, like uncle Joe, as they say, he could have gone to Flint and said, Hey homies, I'm about to hook you up with some water. He would have had Michigan in 12 seconds, but there wasn't this conversation around. Like it's like an unwillingness or a fear of promising that or something where it's like, it's, but I think stuff like that, I mean, that's me obviously oversimplifying to the max, but it's like, you got to go into people's place where they live and tell them, hey, this is how I can help you, like a real yeah. concrete way. And I think if you tell people that concretely, then yeah, okay, then maybe they'll like come out and vote or stand in line or, you know what I mean? But I think without that and just being like, we're America, it's like, okay, what does that mean exactly? There's a connection between um, the the people who Democrats think should be part of their base but are choosing whether to vote at all and the and the kind of rural white voters who have abandoned Democrats for Republicans. Uh, and the connection is they just don't see any tether between what Democrats say and what yep. actually happens. They don't yep. see any connection to it. And so, like, mm-hmm. we talk, people complain about the Electoral College. They complain about the Senate. I'll complain about the Senate. But we're not going to we're not going to we can these dem- these anti-democratic institutions have been with us. We yeah. can either fundamentally restructure the country, which is incredibly difficult, or mm-hmm. we can go figure out why a state like Utah expands Medicaid, but would never vote for a Democrat in a million years. Why a state right. like why a state like Montana yep. legalizes weed and then then rejects Steve Bullock. We have to start having that conversation. That's all. Yeah. 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 Definitely. For real. For real. For Naomi real. Like again. Well, honey, this was good for my soul. I hope it was helpful. Cut out all the offensive things I said. You know your audience is very active. <laughs> I don't like them coming in with mentions. I said, honey, I'm not here for it. I'm too old. Listen, if you come into Naomi's mentions, 
<laughs> with anything with anything short of worship. <laughs> you throw your phone in the fucking garbage. All right, you hear me? Well, I'm trying to become the Kamala of comedy. You know that, honey. I'm like up in here. I am exactly Kamala D. I don't know. Like, I was like, she's up in here, honey, giving you a laid hairstyle and a supportive Jewish husband. I said, hello? That's me. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, supportive Jewish husbands. Listen, may we all have, may we all find the supportive Jewish husbands in our hearts, you know, that we all need. Be the the supportive Jewish husband you want to see in the world. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Thank you.